Ladies and gents, hello and welcome coming to you once again, not quite live from One Take Studios, where we are talking about point slope form today. And I'm glad that we're talking about point slope form today because I think that this form does not get enough love for linear equations. I've got uh, textbooks that sort of ignore it completely. Everybody is, is all excited about y equals mx plus b. Yes, but point slope form has opportunities where it can shine above the other forms, in my opinion. So, point slope form, first of all, people look at, like, look at it like, oh, I have no idea where it came from. It's really, really weird. Well, I'd like you to look at this. This is point slope form, all right? I, and it's weird. Okay, fine. But isn't this kind of weird looking as well? Quite frankly, these two are related. The formula for finding a slope, for calculating slope, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. What if I took this equation and I multiplied both sides by the denominator? I multiplied both sides by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It would look a heck of a lot like this form here. So ladies and gentlemen, this is just a rearrangement, a reimagining of our slope formula. So if we're looking at point slope form and going, hmm, where did it get its name from? Well, hmm, but there's a point involved. Specifically, I've drawn arrows to the y sub 1 and the x sub 1. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our point for point-slope form. Often, we want to have numbers for these two. x by itself, while it is a variable, we're going to leave it as an x. And the y by itself, again, we're going to leave it as a variable because we'd like to have the y when we are trying to write an equation. And that really, that's the strong suit for point slope form is to write the equation. If I want to write the equation, I'd like to have an x and a y, or at least one of them. And so I don't want to get like crazy with everything that I fill in, but I do want to put one point, one set of numbers here, and m again is my slope. So imagine that. Hmm, point slope form uses a point and a slope. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, ladies and gents, again, please take something colorful, exciting, decorate. You need to be able to access this form right here. You need to be able to find it, use it, know it, love it quickly in your notes. So please make sure that you've decorated it, painted it in watercolors, your choice, whatever you'd like there. All right, so making use of that then, uh, let's take a peek, shall we? Um, I want to focus on the idea of writing equations because to me, this is the prominent strength of this form. And I've got two examples for you. We're going to begin with the one that is on the left. If I have been given a slope and I know that my line goes through a particular point and I'm wondering, gee, how do I write an equation? If I have a point and a slope, hmm, how could I possibly write an equation if I have a point and a slope? Oh wait, I have a great idea. How about if I use point slope form? And I've seen people try to force this into slope intercept form and yes, it's possible, but I find oftentimes students don't really understand what's happening and so they, they forget how that works. To me, this makes a ton of sense. This thing needs a point. I have one. This thing needs a slope. I have one. Let's write it. Let's make it happen, shall we? All right, so I'm going to actually rewrite this over here so we can get everything set up right below it. It's a nice side-by-side -side comparison. So y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And I would like to plug in numbers here and here and here. All right, so that's my point, the x and the y with the sub 1s and the slope. If I can put numbers in those three places, I have an equation. So y minus, well, y sub 1. Here's my point. It's an x and a y, isn't it? I think it is. And so which one's the y? The 6. So the y, 6, goes with the y. So y minus y sub 1 becomes y minus 6. Equals m. m stands for slope. What's my slope? 3. I'm going to put a 3 in place of m. Open up my parentheses. x minus, um, thinking, thinking, thinking. What do we got here? Um, Oh, that's right. x minus x sub 1. I have an x. Remember, this is an xy ordered pair. That's the x value. I'm going to put it there. That's it. I'm done. If I put numbers in those three spots, I've written my equation. I don't have to do anything else. I could rearrange it and, and put it into slope intercept form. That's possible. But I don't have to do anything else. If I'm trying to write an equation, that counts right there. Ta-da! 
All right, so just things to think about. Don't sell this one short. Again, this here, this was my X1 writing side, sort of tiny there, and this was my Y1 right there. So that's my X and my Y plugging in there, and that's my slope. There we go. If I wanted to put this into slope intercept form, I could. I would do something like this. I would have y minus 6 is equal to, and I would distribute the 3. So 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 1, that's going to be 3 times negative 1 there, so minus 3. And what was what would happen if I were to add at this point, let's say I add 6 to both sides. I'm squishing this in here real quick, plus 6, plus 6. What would happen to that? Um, I would have y by itself. I would have an equal sign. I would have a 3x, and negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3. This right here also counts as an equation. This equation right here, y equals 3x plus 3, is the exact same equation as y minus 6 equals 3 times x minus 1. It's the same equation. It just looks different. That's all. Same information. If I graph this one, and if I graph this one, I'll have the same exact thing. So when it comes to writing equations, consider point-slope form. If you have a point and a slope, consider point-slope form. It's easier. It makes sense. I love it when math makes sense. All right, so let's go with something a little bit more interesting. Dun, dun, dun. What do we know this time? We have a point and a point. Ladies and gentlemen, there's standard form. There is slope-intercept form, and there is point-slope form. There is no point-point form. But I have good news. If I have two points, what can I do? Find the slope, and then I'll have a slope and a point, and I can use point-slope form. So that's where I want to start. If you're going to write an equation for a line, anytime you write an equation for a line, you need the slope. That means if you're not given the slope, you better go hunting for it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract these guys. I guess I can line these up. Eh, maybe you'll like that better. So this is my x1. This is my y1. I'm writing really tiny. I'm sorry. This is my x2. This is my y2. Trying to squeeze those names in there for you. So when I go to use my formula, I'm going to subtract the y's on top. So that's going to be a negative 3 minus 4 over. I'm going to subtract my x's on the bottom. That's 8 minus negative 1. 8 minus negative 1. Pay attention to those negatives, would you? Because if you don't, eh, you're going to make a mistake someplace. All right, so negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7 for my numerator, and 8 minus negative 1, that's 8 plus 1, that's 9. That's my slope, negative 7 ninths. Cool. I have a slope. I have a point. I can use point-slope form. Wait a minute. I have two points. Which one do I use? Again, good news. It doesn't matter. It, does, it, it matters not at all. If I'm going to use this, I'm going to pick one. Let's say I decide to pick the first one, and I write my equation. y minus, well, what's the y value? 4. y minus 4 equals m, there's my slope, negative 7 ninths, times x minus, what was the x? Well, if the 4 is the y, then negative 1 goes here. Ooh, but I'm subtracting a negative 1. What does that mean? Subtracting a negative means plus 1. Done. I've written my equation. Done. That's it. Boom. Right there. Why would I want to force this into slope-intercept form? That's valid. But what about the other point? If you like that one, you can pick that one. Again, you can't choose wrong here. If I go with the other one, it's going to be y minus, ooh, what's this guy? y minus negative 3, so minus negative 3, that's y plus 3, equals, the slope is going to be the same regardless, so negative 7 ninths, and then x minus, well, what x goes with this one, that was the 8, there we go. That also is a completely valid answer for writing for the equation. So I can pick either point, and those end up being the exact same. I know they don't look the exact same, but if you start playing around with them, and if you were to graph them, they would produce the same line. So again, point slope, its greatest benefit is for writing the equations. Really easy. Plug in a point, plug in a slope, done. I have seen people use this for graphing. It is not my favorite idea. Now you can see why I was squeezing that in. Um, let's see if we can do this for some separation sake again. There we go, make it a little bit easier to read. Okay. 
So if we're looking at this for graphing, it's, it's possible. Again, like I said, it's not my favorite thing. But what I need to identify is the fact that there is a point here and there is a slope. And if I have that information, that is enough to graph. Uh, the thing that I see here is people tend to not really super pay attention to the signs that are there. So what was my point? If I look at this, that was the x, that was the y. So if I look at this, 4 is my x. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That says x minus x sub 1. This says x plus 4. Why would it do that? Why would it say plus? It would only say plus if I was subtracting a negative number. So I would have to look at x plus 4 and know that that meant my x value that goes there is actually a negative 4 for my point. And then this is y minus y sub 1. Well, what do we have? y minus 2. So 2 is the y value. So I can take these two numbers and make an ordered pair. And I know already that the slope is already packaged up and ready to go for me. It's negative one third because I can see it sitting right there. This is enough information to draw. Because now if I find negative four, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, that is my point negative four, two. And I happen to know that, I don't like that there. From there, my rise over run, again, rise, run, I am rising negative one. So that means I'm actually falling one. And then I'm going to run three. One, two, three. If I want to continue that pattern again, I can also rise negative one and run one, two, three and keep it going. But that is absolutely enough for me to draw my line. So can you use this to graph? Yes, yes, you can. Do you want to? I don't know. Do you want to? If you like it, go for it. Use it. That's fine. But you have to be really careful with the signs more than anything else to make sure you end up with your positives and negatives in the right spot. Okay, so again, this is the kind of thing that just gets better with practice. So, practice. Enjoy!